He's the most senior enlisted soldier in the Army and the eyes and ears for all other enlisted service members. Joining us is Sergeant Major of the Army, Michael Grinston. Two issues that are very important to you personally and that the Army has struggled with historically are sexual assault and suicide. First, I want to talk about sexual harassment and assault. Um, reports of both have increased over the, the recent years. Why is that? I think fundamentally we haven't looked at it from two perspectives. One is from prevention and then one is response. We have to have world-class response, but we really need to focus on prevention <clears throat> and that way we'll see the numbers going down. We need world-class response, but most of our programs have been focused to the reaction to sexual assault. To truly get the numbers down, we have to focus on prevention, the environment, and making sure that we don't have these things in the first place. And I think that's where we're heading in the future. And, and I know that you're very passionate about that. Why is that? Well, these are our soldiers, and um, I just think we have to do better. Uh, our soldiers deserve it. Our country deserves uh, to have this kind of Army values instilled in our soldiers, and we got to protect them no matter what. So we're going to do better. I promise. A lot of times the numbers that you're getting are, can be years old. How does that affect your ability to really address this problem? Yeah, this is, this is the, the new way we're, we need to look at it. We, we can't just get perfect data. And sometimes these cases take a long time. And that really hurts us. If it takes us two years to get the information that we need, we're probably going to solve the, the wrong problem. We just need to go with the information that we have now, acknowledge that it may not be perfect, but then take an action to prevent it. If we wait two years to get the information, I think uh, it's not going to be relevant for what we're doing now. Is there something that can be done to get those numbers quicker? Yes, absolutely. We know when something happens. Uh, the hard part is we don't know when something doesn't happen. And so, again, that goes to response to prevention. We can see that our numbers are staying flat or decreasing right now based off of an allegation. And I think that's where I have to go is it's not going to be perfect. We just assume that um, if there is an allegation, what could we have done to prevent this to ever be even become an allegation? Let's talk about the command culture itself. What needs to happen to that to change that environment, make it a safer environment for everybody? This is one of those things we've talked about a lot in the last three years is the culture in the command climate. We have to know our people. Um, we have to see if they're struggling with anything. Um, if you got a, you know, a bad day or somebody said something inappropriate to you, you have to notice that. The only way you're going to notice that is a culture of knowing your people, my squad, know who's in it. Notice if they don't say anything that day that's odd or what's that look on your face. I think the only way uh, you're going to really realize what's going on with people as a leader is understanding them as a person and truly knowing them and their families. You know, I, uh, Sergeant Major, I don't need to tell you this, but the Army's really good at training. So yeah. why can't this bad behavior be trained out of people? Yeah, that's, it's a difficult, it, first, it's a really difficult uh, topic for Americans and not just, uh, you know, in the military. But what we've seen is sometimes it's the timing of the training. And so we were doing training at the three week mark and we moved it to the three day mark in basic training in AIT. As new soldiers who were coming in, they didn't understand that that, uh, that action they took may be considered abusive sexual contact. So we have to say, hey, you can't do the, the slap on here or slap on there because that's not appropriate in the Army. That's actually sexual assault. So moving that training from three weeks to three days, we've seen a 50% decrease in those type of sexual assaults in basic training in AIT. You know, many cases do go unreported. Uh, it's a very sensitive topic. What can you do to encourage victims to speak up, especially if the perpetrator is in the chain of command? Yeah, that's, a, that's still a difficult, uh, you know, question. We want our soldiers to feel comfortable with everybody in the chain of command. Uh, if, if you're immediate chain of command, please go to the next hire. So, the, again, this culture of knowing your soldiers, but if that immediate supervisor is the one doing it, uh, we have special uh, assault uh, victim coordinators, we have hotlines, we have plenty of places and resources. 
that you can call and get after, but that still responds. We want to create that environment where that a supervisor isn't doing that, and we have uh, plenty of people that can help. Going that. upstream, as yeah. you like to say. Yeah. Um, earlier this year, the Army launched uh, the Fusion Directorate. Tell us about that. What's that about? Yeah, this is uh, really exciting. So you have this one location. It's called the Fusion Directorate. You can go, and if you need to talk to a counselor, if you ha want, need to see CID agent because you have been assaulted, or you know, you get any resource numbers, it's all in one area. You don't have to go to 15 different buildings. It's one location and there's synergy. So that you, when you have a, an issue, it can be addressed and you don't have to go to multiple places. We are piloting that in six locations and we're really, really excited about the Fusion Directory. Um, let, going back downstream then, let's yeah. talk about justice. Once an assault or harassment does happen, what are you doing to make sure that perpetrators are brought to justice and are held accountable? Yeah, um, we've restructured our uh, CID agents. So, Which is what? Uh, the Criminal Investigation uh, Department. So we bring in the investigators that will look at sexual assault. We've um, made those where they're actually more civilian so they don't move as much. So when they know the environment, they know the location, they know who to, who to call, um, when anything bad happens, meaning the local police, because some of these are off the installation. So having a restructuring of the, the CID actually helps us, you know, kind of bring those perpetrators to justice faster. Sergeant Major, in 2021 saw the highest number of soldier suicides in recent history. Uh, 2020 was the second highest. What's going on? What's behind that increase? Well, we really couldn't pin it down to one particular area. We, we can assume that COVID kind of just took us apart. You know, as people stayed home, uh, they were more isolated and that isolation had an effect. Uh, but we're, we can't just say, oh, uh, that was COVID and we shouldn't use that excuse. We got to continue to reach out, uh, but we're assuming that some of this was because our soldiers weren't connected to their units. They weren't connected to the families. They couldn't go home and those connections matter. What are this year's numbers showing so far? So far, we're doing much better than we were last year, and that's promising, at least 20% lower than we were. And I'm skeptical about those numbers because uh, I really hope it wouldn't change you know, for the rest of the year, but it can spike. Uh, but right now, we're extremely excited that the, the numbers are lower, um, but we're not satisfied with lower we want. Clearly, we want zero suicides. What are some of the things, the initiatives that you're doing to reduce that number? Well, uh, one of the things we just started with is applying leadership. And we're going to talk about this every month, bring all the senior enlisted leaders across the globe, all the way Korea to Italy and across the U.S., and just have a discussion on suicide. And it's a product of learning. It's about getting up further upstream so that we share those ideas and say, here's what we're doing. Here's one thing specifically that we've seen is we have what's called, one of the things is a leader engagement tool where we can go in and we say, okay, what's going on in the barracks? What's happening? And we can apply the crime report on there and say, hey, do we have leaders checking on their soldiers enough? But there's, there's more initiatives and we're really working hard to get those numbers down. The Army does provide uh, behavioral health services but you say that's not enough. Yeah, I really believe that uh, this is about those connections that we all, you know, have to ha have a part in this. It's not just about behavioral health. This is, this is about talking to your squad leader or members of your squad, people that are close to you. It's talking to your family. What we've seen is the more connections you have, not just behavioral health, um, the more protective you are. It's not to say it's okay to seek behavioral health. Uh, we're not saying don't seek uh, behavioral health. Absolutely, I've, I've actually gone and I went to behavioral health in November. I was having some issues. I needed to talk to someone. So it's perfectly fine to seek behavioral health. But I don't think that's really gonna get us down to zero where we need to be. You've talked about the golden triangle. Explain what that is. Uh, this is 
what I'm talking about is those connections, uh, the golden triangle, the soldiers in the middle, then you have family, you have the buddy, meaning someone's close to you, um, you've got your squad leader. So when you can connect the family, the friends, and the unit together, those are protective factors for that soldier in the middle. After behavioral health, you found that there needs to be more follow-up after somebody seeks help than what happens after that. Yes, so one of the programs that we, we uh, are talking about is we can't just have an inpatient behavioral health and then put soldiers, you know, you're good, put them back in the barracks or put them back in their family because they need to have those connections. So one of the programs we're looking at is what exactly we, would we do to remind soldiers that life is wonderful? <laughs> and how do we keep them connected when they're released from an outpatient behavioral health? We gotta have those connections and we can't just say, oh, you're out of uh, behavioral health, then you should be fine. I, I think you're still at risk or you're higher at risk and we gotta make sure that uh, we check on you more, not less. You know, the issue isn't unique to the Army. How are you working with your counterparts in the other services? Well, we, we talk about this uh, all the time. We're always trying to solve each other's problems. Uh, and, and it's not just our other counterparts uh, in this Army. Uh, I meet once a month with the Five Eyes on a Teams call, and we talk about what we're doing. Um, as a matter of fact, the UK uh, even came out to our summit in June, and we had uh, Canadian, New Zealand, they all came, and they actually provided us feedback. And uh, the former Sergeant Major of the Army for uh, the UK said, about reverse mentorship, where you have soldiers talking to you about what you could do to improve. So we're, we're coming at this from uh, all of those services, you know, other countries, because we all deal with this. Um, and I think that's the way to look at it. Holistically, it's not about just go to behavioral, it's about getting ideas, new ideas, and those connections. You also hold a monthly meeting with all the Sergeant Majors of the Army. Describe that. Well, it's, it's rather lengthy, um, but we, we start off with, this is what our purpose is. And there's, I, I've given them clear uh, guidance and said, there's two things, I want zero. I want zero sexual assaults and I want zero suicides. Um, but it's not a- That's quite the goal. Yeah, I know. Um, but I think what we looked at two years ago, when we looked at upstream, if you don't have that goal, you're not gonna push yourself far enough. You're not gonna go that extra step to get to zero. Um, so we look at it in a, in a matter of, comp not compliance, but of learning. Here's something I tried. Is that gonna help someone else so we don't have to learn those uh, problems again and again? All right, well, Sergeant Major Grinson, thank you so much for coming in. Uh, thank you. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any future Government Matters interviews.